Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today I wanted to share with you guys some things that I wish I would have known before trying to conceive or TTC, whatever you want to call it. And also some things that I feel like I did that I think were not necessarily like beneficial, like help me get pregnant, but just some like mindset things that helped me get through the whole experience. So the very first thing, and I think the number one most important thing that you can get from this video, if you have just started trying or you're going to start trying soon, is there is a good chance that it's not going to happen right away and that's okay. You're not alone in that. So many people responded to me I wish I would have known it was gonna take longer than I expected. And just because it doesn't happen right away doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. I wish I could have internalized that better throughout the whole experience. But going along with that, there is a chance that it will happen that first month. So you have to be in a position where if it does happen that first time, you are prepared and ready to have a child in nine months. And just because it doesn't happen right away does not mean that you are never going to get pregnant. After a few months of trying, I started getting so much anxiety surrounding this idea of, oh my gosh, I'm going to struggle with infertility. I'm never going to get pregnant. I'm never going to have a baby of my own. And I was just really caught up in that idea of like, because it's not happening these first three months or four months, like it's never going to happen. And I really let that play out in my brain, which is a very unhealthy thing. And I just want you to know that it's okay if it doesn't happen right away. It's okay if it takes several months, like you are not alone in it taking time. The next thing is be flexible in how you're going about the whole process of actually trying. Even if you may want to go about it a very particular calculated timed way, that doesn't mean that your partner wants to go about it that same way. And you need to have that conversation. You need to take their emotions into your decision because if you guys are butting heads over that of you wanting to be very calculated and timed and him just wanting to go with the flow and be very organic it's not going to be a fun experience and you're going to fight over it it's just gonna make it so much less enjoyable and it's gonna add to the stress of it not happening it is okay to stop charting even though that could be the thing that you're all about I'm very much all about charting all about fam I'm all about like being in tune with your body knowing where you are in your cycle I stopped charting after three months of trying because it was getting into my head, it was getting into my partner's head, and it just wasn't a positive addition to the whole process. I knew enough about my body, he knew enough about like fertility in my body that we knew when we were supposed to be trying without diligently taking my temperature and checking my fluid every single day. I still obviously kept an eye out for that fertile fluid because you just can't ignore it once you've been charting for so many years. I know exactly when I'm fertile because of the cervical fluid. One thing that I tell people to focus on when they first start charting or if they've been charting for a couple months is your cervical fluid. I cannot express to you like how important your cervical fluid is to the process of conceiving. Ovulation is obviously very important. Your cervical fluid is just this magical. There's a book I just read that it was called the elixir of life or the life elixir and I was like that is so true because if you don't have fertile quality fluid it's gonna make the whole conception process so much harder and so I always say like if there's one thing you want to focus on focus on boosting your cervical fluid because it's not difficult it's not super intense intrusive or anything. It's just simple things. I've written a blog post about it. I've made a video about it. I'll link it down below. And the number one thing is just drinking more water because your cervical fluid is 90, like 90 something percent water. And so if you're dehydrated and don't have enough water, your body is not going to send water to your cervical fluid. It's going to use it up in other areas that it needs more. Other things that really helped me were taking evening primrose oil and flaxseed oil, drinking grapefruit juice. Those are the ones I can think of, but I wrote a whole blog post about it. And I'll, like I said, I'll link that down below. That's the number one thing I share with people that are like, what's something I can be doing? I'm like, boost your cervical fluid. This is a hard one to tell you to do. Don't let yourself get all consumed by the process because it can be such an all consuming process. All you think about, you spend so much time charting, you spend so much time like eating the right things, doing the right things, avoiding certain things, obviously putting enough effort and thought into it to have the best chance you can, but also make time for friends, make time for families, socialize, go out and do things that you enjoy and make you happy and make sure you're doing things outside of your personal life of trying to conceive because it's just going to keep you so much more sane if you're doing things to take your mind off of the fact that you're trying to get pregnant and it might not be happening right away. You can have your own coffee and you can have your wine. Don't feel like you need to completely cut out caffeine and alcohol. When we first started trying last January, not even this January, last January, I quit drinking caffeine, quit drinking alcohol. I'm going to be super drilled sergeant in all the things you're supposed to be doing and it wasn't fun 
<laughs> like on top of me not getting pregnant, there's little things in life. Like obviously you shouldn't be doing hard drugs. You know, you shouldn't be smoking weed if you're trying to get pregnant and you shouldn't be binge drinking. But I allowed myself to have two cups of coffee in the morning. That was below the recommended limit of caffeine intake. Now that I am pregnant, I have my one cup of coffee in the morning and I enjoy it oh so much. Like I, lo I look forward to that cup of coffee every single day. When I go to bed at night, I look forward to that cup of coffee. As for alcohol, I think I I didn't drink for four months I want to say and then I was like this is dumb Victoria just have a glass of wine the agreement I came to myself with is in the first two weeks of my cycle before ovulation I could drink and it was fine I I've never well college aside I've never been one to like drink to excess like I don't binge drink I don't have more than like a couple drinks a week sort of thing keeping it to like a reasonable amount for ovulation and then after ovulation I just would take a two-week break from drinking just in case I was pregnant and then I didn't have that like worry of like oh my gosh have I like poisoned my baby that was a compromise I came to with myself it worked out great kind of going along with that like two-week split no one to take a break from baby stuff it is so much fun to look at baby stuff to make your wish list registry to look at like the crib you want to watch baby videos birthing vlogs and all of that but at some point you're like I need a break from this and so just kind of naturally went to this cycle of in the first two weeks of my cycle you know when I was mourning the fact that I wasn't pregnant that my period had came and it wasn't gonna happen in nine months I would just take a break from all things baby once I had ovulated and there was a chance again that I could be pregnant and have a baby inside of me I let myself get excited within reason allow yourself to take breaks from thinking about babies. Ooh, get the cheap ovulation LH tests and pregnancy tests from Amazon. I will also link those down below because you can spend so much money on pregnancy tests and ovulation tests. Here in the US at the drugstores, it's like $15 for a two pack. That adds up so quickly. I get an Amazon bulk pack or I did and it's like $8 for 100 or $8 for 50. If you're like, right, we know we're going to be trying, go on Amazon and order yourself a bulk pack because you're gonna save so much money. Obviously, if it's kind of like a one-off like, shit, am I pregnant? Then <laughs> you can just go to the drugstore and get a pregnancy test. But if you know that you're gonna be actively trying, get yourself a bulk pack. Going along with tests, I did better when I did not obsessively test. Just because it seems like everyone else on the internet starts diligently taking their tests at eight days past ovulation does not mean you have to. Just from like an emotional, mental standpoint, I did better when my period came as a way of saying, no, you're not pregnant, than if I saw a negative pregnancy test. That's just me and other other people would rather see a negative pregnancy test before their period comes. But if you do want to test before your period, wait until like the day or two before your period so you're not getting your hopes up and like squinting for some line that could possibly be there, but then being like, oh, it's not there, but maybe it's too early and just like, I don't know, it's just, it was really hard on me to like go through that cycle every single month. And I could show you old journals somewhere. February, March, April, May, August. This is nine days past ovulation, negative 10, 11, 12, 13. And I even, you can't see it, but I mean the stupid piece of paper, there are two lines right up here from the ovulation tests that I knew how far apart the two test lines would be, I made that mark on this piece of paper so my crazy brain could sit here and hold this up to the pregnancy test to be like, this is where the line is supposed to be, Victoria. Do you see a line? And to like, I don't know, help convince myself that I saw. And so like squinting for lines is not like, an emotionally healthy thing for me. Some people enjoy it, some people like need to do it, but it was not a good thing for me and so I would almost recommend against it. But if you wanna do it, do it. I even wrote on this piece of paper, I created this to know the distance between the test lines as if it would somehow help me see a line that wasn't there. <laughs> so anyways, like I did not do well with testing a lot. So. Journal, journal, journal. It is so good to have a person to talk to. Obviously you're gonna be talking to your partner about it. You might have a friend or a sister or a mother or someone that you're talking about, like the whole process. I then would get in my head to like, oh my God, I feel like I'm complaining to this person. I feel like I'm talking too much and like blabbing and like all I ever talk about 
about is like the fact that I'm not getting pregnant with this person and that got into my head and made me feel guilty. But journaling and especially morning pages, I can't recommend that enough, is you get to literally just brain vomit everything that is like floating around and circling around up in here onto paper and getting it out of your head and like working through it on paper. It was such a beneficial thing for me. You can have all of your unfiltered thoughts and emotions and fears, the things that you're not even sharing with those people that you're talking to. I'm terrified that I'm never going to have a baby. I'm terrified that I'm going to be one of those people that isn't fertile and can't get pregnant. The things you don't wanna share with other people. I would love to one day look back at my morning pages from those several months. Just to see kind of all of those thoughts, but it was, I can't recommend that enough. Another thing that if you're curious about trying with affirmations, they're a little bit cheesy for some people and I definitely thought they were super cheesy way back in the day through the process of trying to get pregnant and then this second time when we did get pregnant again in that first trimester of just having so much anxiety that I was gonna miscarry again, like having affirmations, this is what your body's meant to do, your body is healthy, it is fertile, it is abundant. So if it, that's something that like kinda speaks to you and resonates with you a little bit, like give it a go, look up some TTC affirmations on Pinterest. Just find a couple that speak to you, write them down on a piece of paper and say them to yourself every now and then. And if you guys want me to share some of the ones I use, let me know and I'll like make a document or something on Femhead Com. Something I wish I would have known. The second most important thing that I wish I would have known beyond it's going to take longer than you think, miscarriages in the first trimester are so much more common than you will ever realize until you experience one and then everyone starts sharing their stories with you. It doesn't make it any easier knowing that they're common. It's still devastating and heartbreaking, but I just want you to know that you are not alone. Like, it is just terrifying and it's heartbreaking how common miscarriages are. There's a chance it might happen. There's a chance it might not happen. Like, it doesn't feel like you're ever going to get through it but you will, and it just takes time, unfortunately, and there's not really anything that anyone can say to make you feel better, other than knowing that maybe you're not, I mean, you're not alone in it, but just give yourself time to grieve and to process it, and you'll get back to a point to where you're like, right, okay, I'm ready to try this again. Limit yourself when it comes to Googling stuff, going on TTC forums, and all of that good internet jazz. It's nice to know that there's a community of people out there that are supporting each other, but there will literally always be someone with the same exact weird odd symptom that you have the things I googled <laughs> the things I googled and then like something something symptom am I pregnant 9 DPO pregnant like psychotic there will be someone out there with the same exact weird symptom that is pregnant and there will be the same exact person out there with the same exact symptom that isn't pregnant like you can find anything online and so just limit yourself because you can spiral into just like a deep black hole on those forums this is one that when I first found out I was pregnant last summer I don't even know. So it's worth knowing, like most providers don't wanna see you until you're like eight to 12 weeks pregnant. Anyways, if you're gonna find out at four weeks, it's still another month or two before they even wanna see you. So you've got time to figure out what provider you wanna go to. There's not much they can do beyond give you a pregnancy test, give you a blood test and test like your different levels. But if you are concerned about maybe your progesterone levels or something like that, you can go in and they can test those to see if they're going up like they should be or if they're maybe going down and then they can give you some sort of progesterone supplement for it. I think it's pretty common if you have had a previous miscarriage that they want to see you kind of right away. In this second pregnancy, I went in at five weeks, a week after I found out to get my HCG tested, my progesterone tested, and probably some other stuff tested. But it was like, yep, your HCG levels are going up, your progesterone's going up, like it all looks good. And that was really reassuring because I've always been kind of concerned about my progesterone levels and I know that's really important. Normally they don't wanna see you until you're eight to 12 weeks. And if you do go in, there's only so much they can do at that point in pregnancy. So it's good to know. Start taking a prenatal before you start trying. Folate or folic acid is really important in those first few weeks of pregnancy before you even know that you're pregnant. If you're gonna be trying, just start taking a prenatal. Final thing I wanna say is through all of this, like you are not alone. There are so many couples at any given point that are in the same exact boat as you. So while you may feel alone, find comfort in the fact that you're not. 
Anyways, yeah, if you guys want me to do a kind of what I wish I would have known before getting pregnant, you let me know. I'll probably make that towards the end of my third trimester. I actually enter into my third trimester this Saturday, so that's super exciting and crazy. Thanks for watching today's video, you guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to follow along with me and the videos I make and my whole little journey with this little nugget butt in my belly. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.